the Lord said unto Cain, Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? And Cain said unto the Lord, Am I my brother's keeper? St. John says, How can you say that you love God when you don't see if you do not love your neighbor whom you see? Whoever does an Adam's way of evil shall see it. And everything is in the book. Everything that we do is in the book. It's written in the book. The legacy of genocide, the legacy of colonialism, the legacy of racism, is in every one of us. Personal and collective well-being are interdependent. Again, if you are boasting more than what you need, you are stealing. One unrepented sin will keep you out of heaven, my friend. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. Hello, boys and girls. Today, we're going to learn about sharing. Do you know how to share? Christianity talks about letting go of our lives in order to save them letting go of some of our obsession about security, prosperity, and success in order that the whole world may live, in order that the whole human family may live and flourish. That is something which Christians ought to be underlining as strongly as they possibly can. You have heard no concepts of morality but the mystical or the social. You have been taught that morality is a code of behavior imposed on you by whim, the whim of a supernatural power, or the whim of society, to serve God's purpose or your neighbor's welfare, to please an authority beyond the grave or else next door, but not to serve your life or pleasure. Your pleasure, you have been taught, is to be found in immorality. Your interests would best be served by evil, and any moral code must be designed not for you, but against you. Not to further your life, but to drain it. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. If you love only those who love you, why should you claim any credit? Even the tax collectors do as much. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, offer the other also. And if anyone takes away your coat, give him your cloak as well. Give to everyone who asks from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. For centuries, the battle of morality was fought between those who claimed that your life belongs to God and those who claimed that it belongs to your neighbors, between those who preached that the good is self-sacrifice for the sake of ghosts in heaven and those who preached that the good is self-sacrifice for the sake of incompetence on earth and no one came to say that your life belongs to you and that the good is to live it. Both sides agreed that morality demands the surrender of your self-interest and of your mind.
that the moral and the practical are opposites, that morality is not the province of reason, but the province of faith and force. Both sides agree that no rational morality is possible, that there is no right or wrong in reason, that in reason there's no reason to be moral. Whatever else they fought about, it was against man's mind that all your moralists have stood united. It was man's mind that all their schemes and systems were intended to despoil and destroy. Now, choose to perish or to learn that the anti-mind is the anti-life. Sweep aside those parasites of subsidized classrooms who live on the profits of the mind of others. Sweep aside those hatred-eating mystics who pose as friends of humanity and preach that the highest virtue man can practice is to hold his own life as of no value. It is for the purpose of self-preservation that man needs a code of morality. The only man who desires to be moral is the man who desires to live. two kinds of teachers of the morality of death, the mystics of spirit and the mystics of muscle, whom you call the spiritualists and the materialists. No matter how loudly they posture in the roles of irreconcilable antagonists, their moral codes are alike, and so are their aims. In matter, the enslavement of man's body. In spirit, the destruction of his mind. Do you think they are taking you back to dark ages? They are taking you back to darker ages than any your history has known. Their purpose is to deprive you of the concept on which man's mind, his life, and his culture depend, the concept of an objective reality. We, the men of the mind, are now on strike in the name of a single axiom which is the root of our moral code, just as the root of yours is the wish to escape it. An axiom is a statement that identifies the base of knowledge and of any further statement pertaining to that knowledge, a statement necessarily contained in all others, whether any particular speaker chooses to identify it or not. An axiom is a proposition that defeats its opponents by the fact that they have to accept it and use it in the process of any attempt to deny it. My morality, the morality of reason, is contained in a single axiom. Existence exists. And in a single choice, to live. 